Hello dear YouTube friends and dear Patreon friends. I am going to make this video for both platforms. Um, I want to show my YouTube friends what I'm doing on Patreon and um, Patreon friends are getting to see this without any ads so that's a difference. But this video is going to be for everyone. So my name is Mandy van Goeie for if you're new on my channel that's who I am and um, I'm a Dutch artist illustrator um, due to health problems, I haven't worked very much in the past years and I'm sort of working hard to get back up to par. Right, this is my tea moment in the afternoon and I've got some chocolate, some 70% pure cocoa chocolate um, waiting to help me through the afternoon. Because I'm a bit tired, I have to say, and still I'm doing a video because... I've set myself the goal to do 100 watercolours um, on the basis of an abstract background. So the one I'm going to be working with today is this one. I hope you can see it because it's rather light. So that's the um, painting part that I'm going to film for this video. And um, it's a stain um, made with random um, watercolour that was left on my palette and I'm going to just dive under the camera so this is my ideal palette and my ideal palette is not ideal in the sense that this is a minimal mixing set but it's more like my favourite um, pigments to mix so it's a large set and it's, it contains uh, granulating and non-granulating pigments and well, a very wide range of beautiful colours. So um, I basically picked up the colours from this part of my palette and just, you know, sort of clean up that part of the palette. So um, I find it a little bit difficult um, to focus today. Um, I've already uploaded um, a desktop calendar to my Patreon, um, for my patrons every month I do, um, I make a calendar based on my work. Uh, so I've made that and uploaded that. Um, and also right now I am active in the Capra course. It's got nothing to do with art. Um, this is a course by Fritjof Capra about the systems theory of life, the systems view of life. And it's a course about how these days we no longer see life as um, you know being um, a mechanistic some of its parts but um, that we're looking at you know in modern science we're looking at complicated and intricate systems and patterns and relationships between those um, and that theory can be applied to every um, aspect of human life also in society politics economics etc so um, the thing is, I like to focus uh, my work on, um, you know, doing something good for the world. Um, so I like to focus on nature, on the intricate system that nature is and that has a relationship to climate change, etc. So I'm in the course um, to see where I can, um, how I can further focus my attention and energy. So I've been busy doing those two things today. So I've been busy on my Patreon, writing a piece there, I've been busy in the course. And I've also been busy, and that's kind of a nice thing, you know, just to completely on the side. But anyway, um, I, I have a love-hate relationship with gouache. I absolutely admire the gouache work of illustrator Rebecca Dutremer. She's a French illustrator and she's just She's the boss concerning the techniques of, of gouache. Nobody, I think, I don't think I know anyone else who does it like she does. Wonderful. Um, I thought that, you know, knowing my way around watercolor, I would be able to do the same. But the result is that I have an awful lot of gouache um, here. Like, I will show you. So this is the full Talon's range of gouache which works really lovely by the way but you know a bad what's it bad workman always blames his tools i wasn't very good with gouache so at first i thought it was rubbish the gouache it was not my fault but it was the paint so 
then I had to try out some ooh, <laughs> other brands. Um, I tried out nearly every brand there is available in the world, nearly, because um, the Japanese brands, I do have a little bit of acrylic wash by whole bean, but it's just too expensive, not going in there. Anyway, um, where is my book? Oh God, I forgot my book. Anyway, a couple of years ago, I bought a book on gouache. I thought I had it here, but I'm mistaken, sorry. I had a book by Ayo Blau about gouache. I read German, so for me, the book was a really great instructional book about gouache. And um, even though I knew much of it, um, Alyosha tied together all the loose ends for me, so I had a better understanding of the medium. But he's now got, and you know, I'm not affiliated, let's make that clear, but he's now got a course online on Domestica. So um, when I saw that last Sunday, I subscribed immediately and started painting. And so um, I did one um, based on a picture of Anton uh, Sorgen um, on Flickr. And um, this is the first one I did, and I made a mistake here, this leg. Don't look at the leg, but the rest of the frog is um, pretty accurate. And um, then I did another based on a picture of Ardudu, also on Flickr. And, um, but I changed it slightly and turned it into a more illustrative style. Although this frog really is orange, by the way. It just doesn't have the blue, but I changed it because of the color wheel. Anyway, so that's something I've also been doing and I've been adapting that second frog this morning. Right, so now you know what I've been up to, let's start painting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the camera, so I'm going to, we're going to, you're going to be looking down on my work, and I'm going to speed up the um, video and um, do a voiceover to explain what I'm doing and tell you a little bit about the process, um, because otherwise it would become a very long video, because sometimes my videos really take a long time, sometimes my drawings and paintings take a really long time to make, so let's go, let's paint. So I set myself a challenge to paint 100 watercolour exercises on an abstract watercolour background. So I create, you know, a watercolour stain randomly and then the next day I try to make something out of it. Keywords here for me are exercise and play. It's all about keeping my hands busy, keeping, you know, at work with watercolour and, you know, relaxing, enjoying myself. And also, very often, it's a warming up for the day. The way I generally start is I, you know, I look at my watercolour stain very well and I try to find one, at least one point that draws my attention because it could be something. And then usually I just jump in there and go from there and make that something and then later on figure out how I go on. In this case, there were two somethings I noticed. There was the white spot in, in you know, in the, on the left side of the middle that felt could be an eye. And there was this um, darker line on the left of that that I felt could be a nose. But um, going in there, I saw that the shape of the face was going to be very different than I'd anticipated. So there always remains this gig enormous aspect of play, invention, bending all the rules. And that always leads to very unexpected things that come out. Um, this makes that this process of painting is not just a great exercise um, but it's also really great to for myself as an artist to surprise myself with unexpected things and sometimes things that come out are really funny or beautiful or they evoke emotions that I didn't really expect when I started out at first. What's also interesting is that whatever comes out you know very often um, on in the outside world, I only show the what comes out, the product, so to say. But um, while you're in a process like this, there is nearly always this phase that is like, oh no, what have I done? Um, what am I going to make out of this? Is it ever going to be something? And that's the stage where I find it's important to push 
through to grab other materials if you like but to push through and not give up don't tear it don't tear the page out of your sketchbook don't glue it together with the previous page but simply go on and try to make something of it i found this page actually really hard to turn into something i liked and as you see there are a couple of things that i'm using a couple of tricks i'm using to make this work in the end, to make this into something that I ended up liking very much. Right now, at this stage, what you can see right now is, is a point that I really did not like very much. Um, there is a face, there is an expression, but at this point it was kind of gloomy, it was kind of blue, and it was a little bit too odd. So thinking it was odd, I figured there should be some, well, maybe clown-esque hair or you know i needed to have a balance to to something a color to balance out the blue and the depressing blue that was in there because it was kind of gloomy blue so i needed a warm color but as you will see towards the end of this video i really don't like how it stands out against the white in the background so you will see me make a very drastic decision there what also happened with this page is that I painted a watercolour stain with granulating paints and that I found out in the process of painting that some of them didn't really stick very well on the paper. So I wanted to stop using layers of watercolour. I wanted to start using a dry medium as well to add more depth to the painting basically. So what I did here is I took out um, a polychromos color pencil and um, a paper stump. And what I did is I simply started to um, draw in some lines and, you know, um, use my paper stump on them for some soft lines to soften up the lines and also to create some shading here and there. So that really sort of turned the face into a more three dimensional um, object rather than um, a very it was a very flat um, face up until this moment really and working with watercolor on top of um, no working with color pencil I have to say on top of watercolor is a really really great addition because it allows for a lot of detail whenever you feel when when you use watercolor pigments that will not stay in the paper when you re-wet them which is what happened here because uh, to make this stain I basically just grabbed paint that were on the dirty plate of my palette so yes there were pigments there that didn't stay put very well when that happens it can be a really great idea to start using different media like pastels like water uh, like color pencil to um, work uh, work on to keep working on your um, on your project and I'm saying this especially because this unpredictable process of working on an abstract background can turn into something you don't like and I want to encourage you when that happens is just keep going keep going you know um, and there is another little trick I just told you about something that I really think finished and saved the image of whereas where I'm concerned is a black background because that really um, adds a lot of dimension to the page but also to the face and um, I find that um, only now it's becoming something that's more credible somehow just by changing the background and what's really great about making a background, you know, as the last stage of your painting is that you can actually use that background to outline a little bit more of the shape of your person, as you will see me creating shoulders here in a minute. So I hope you like seeing my process. Um, I am sharing a lot of the 100 watercolor on my Patreon. And I will also show a thing or two here on YouTube in the community, you know, with photos, etc. But on Patreon, I will give descriptions about how I work, the supplies I'm working with, which in this case are leftover paints. And I use a little bit of gouache and the color pencil I just mentioned. 
Um, but on my Patreon, I will give a lot of, you know, explanation about the process in case you're interested or would like to be inspired to do work like this. So feel free to hop over to my Patreon and to check it out if you like. You're very welcome there. As of this week, um, I will install a Discord um, server where we can meet up, where we can, you know, talk. I find Patreon is not as communicative as um, YouTube is. Um, but Discord, they say, <laughs> I don't have much experience there, is a very good um, social platform to add to the Patreon, apparently. So that's what I um I'm exploring right now and I want to open up the um, possibility for my patrons this week. So that would be another interesting thing to um, look into, maybe. So if you like this video, please give me your thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. There will be new videos. And um, of course, you're very welcome to visit my Patreon and check out if it's if there's anything for you there. As you just saw me do, I lifted the page and that's going to be the next watercolour that I'm doing. And I'll be making a step-by-step -step photo series of that for my patrons so that they can see what I did. Should you have any questions about what I did on this particular page, then you can leave your questions in the comments below. I visit my YouTube channel regularly to reply to any comments and I will do my best to answer any questions that there might be. Now, before the video is over and before I go, I want to point out that um, below the video there will be some links to interesting things I mentioned in the first part of the video um, that you might like to visit if it's of any interest to you. And I think it's superfluous, but I'll say nonetheless, this video wasn't sponsored in any way and isn't and won't be. <laughs> I did all of this myself for myself and just for the fun of it, because I love to share um, making art and everything that is related to it. And here is another little sneak preview of tomorrow's work. <laughs> For those who are curious, <laughs> you can check it out on Patreon if you are curious. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching and with a final close-up, I'm saying bye-bye. <laughs>